Hello, I'm Gina and welcome to my channel. Have you ever wondered about Distress Oxide and inks? There are so many wonderful things you can do <laughs> with this product. Look at these beautiful backgrounds. There's a variety of methods and techniques and we're going to go through some today. Did I cover all of them? No, it's impossible. There are some I don't even know about, I'm sure. These are just so versatile. But I do want to give you an introduction, and that's what this is. It's not so much a comparison between the ink and oxides. As you can see, I used them both and, and came up with very close to the same result. But there are some differences, which I will probably address in a different video. But for now, I just wanted to do an introduction and give you an idea of how to use them a couple of different techniques you can use to get different results. I hope you find it enjoyable and informational. Stick with me and I will show you how I made all of these beautiful backgrounds. So let's get started. The first method I want to go over is what I call the direct apply method. I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper and the direct apply method is when you directly apply it from your stamper. This is not a method I use very often, but I have used it before. It's really when you want a lot of color. So you just apply it directly. Now you can apply it swirly like this, because if you stamp right down you'll get the square. You could want the square, which is fine, but just be aware, if you're just going to come in and stamp, you're going to get that shape. So, see how dark that is? We'll come in with some red, and we'll come in with some green. It's really pretty. It's such vibrant colors you're able to achieve with this method. So, it certainly has its place. Like I said, it's not the one I use the most but I absolutely have used it. Let's see, I need one more color here. What should we do? Let's do orange. No, why not? Orange is, an, orange is not a color I use very often, so let's go ahead and give it some use right now. There we go. So, apply that. And there you go. It's gorgeous. It's vibrant. It's easy to do. Now, as you can see how it's uh, shiny, it's still wet in those places. So if you want, you know, if this is the look you're wanting, you need to look, make sure you let it dry before it touches anything else. So we'll put that one over here. Some of the methods I do, you can do them dry or you can do them wet. For the direct apply, I only do that dry because you, you could spray your paper, but I don't want water absorbing into my inks, so I only use the dry method and just go straight from the inker onto a dry piece of paper. The next method I want to show you is what I call lifting. So it's not going, we're not going to apply it directly onto our, oops, <laughs> I still have some red, directly onto our surface, but we're going to apply it onto another surface first and then we're going to lift it from there. So since I've already got red on here, I'll go ahead and use the red again. This is called fired brick. So I'm gonna put it here. Okay, there's the red. And let's go ahead and keep the same colors that we did before, we might as well. So there's the red, I hope I left enough space. Here's the green. And where's my orange? Here's the orange. Oops. I don't know, hopefully you can see that. Okay. Actually, let me come back with a little bit of red right there. Okay. All right. So I've applied it onto my mat. And this is going to be a dry lift. So <laughs> I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to put it down right over top of where I've put my ink. And I'm going to press it down. OK. 
Okay. And when you lift up, come here. There you go. See, it's much mute, much more muted compared to the direct apply. I mean, look at the difference. Really pretty still, but you know you don't have nearly the color saturation as you did with the direct apply. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave those there and reapply. There's my green and my orange and my red. Okay. Now this is going to be the same lifting except the lifting method except wet. So I just have some water in a spray bottle and I'll make spray a fine mist and we're going to lift with it wet. Now for this method, you can spray your surface, your paper, and do it that way. But this is the way I normally do it. Okay. And let's see what we have here. Ooh. <laughs> Depends on how much water you, water you put down, you get all kinds of different um, designs. Now see, I like that. You, you may not like that, but... <laughs> And, and that's fine. It just depends on what you're going for, but I think that is so interesting. Now, another thing you can do is swipe. So actually, I'm going to let that sit just like that and dry because I kind of like that line. I think it's super cool. And hmm, I want to wipe this up, but I don't want to waste it. So I need to get another piece of paper. This is just a piece of cardstock. <laughs> That's so cool. It's amazing how far the ink goes. I mean, look at that. Now, I always do this when I'm working with inks, uh, the Distress inks or the Distress Oxides, because you get the most interesting backgrounds, not even trying, just cleaning up after whatever it is you're working on. I've used a couple of those in, in projects before where it was just so interesting. Not even trying, just totally using it to sop it up. But when I went to do a project, I pull out my backgrounds and a couple of times, the ones I just used to sop up were the most interesting and perfect for whatever it was I was about to do. So hang on to these. Okay, so here is the other method I want to do. I want to do a swipe and it's easier wet. There's red. Oops. And here's green. And orange. So, I'm not going to spray it quite as much as I did that time, but I, oops, let me move that. But I do want to get it damp. Okay. And then we'll take another piece. And we're going to just try to swipe it. So, come here. So, we're going to put it down and then just swipe. <laughs> Isn't that neat? That is so cool. Okay, I'll come back this way. And you can go back and try to pick up places. Looking like I'm trying to see if I can get that up top. That little spot right there. Ooh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and there's some yellow. A lot of the yellow down here didn't get it. So let's see if I can pick that up. There. Look at that. That is so cool. Isn't that neat? So that's the damp swipe method. Look, I still have plenty of ink here. So what I'm going to do is spray it and then sop it up on my extra piece. 
of paper. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. I don't care if all the colors mix together. It doesn't even matter. I'm just trying not to waste it. I'm just trying to, to put the ink somewhere <laughs> that I might be able to use at another time. Okay. That's what I got after that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Now, there is still color here. So don't be fooled. So I'm going to have to spray it and, and wipe it down before I move on. See that? There was a lot of color there, although I couldn't see it. Oops. So, so far I've only used the Distress inks. And the intent of this was not to make a comparison between the Distressed ink and the Distressed oxides but they're convenient to use because the ones I've got are so little. The oxides are bigger, but I can, I can do the same things that I did with the Distress inks, and I'll show you that right now. So we put down the red. Just use, I just end up using more ink. <laughs> and I don't have the exact same colors, but I pulled a red, and here's a green. And I'm going to use Aged Mahogany because it's like my very favorite color now. <laughs> I haven't had it very long. I love it, love it, love it. So I'm going to add some there. Okay. And again, we can go right in and do a lift. You know what? I didn't do a direct apply, did I? <laughs> I told you I don't use that method very often, but I will go back and do that. Okay, so here's a lift. This is a dry lift. Really pretty. I get very similar. Let me show you the other lift we did. Here's the lift with the distressed ink, and here is with the distress oxide. So they look very similar. Oh, I'm sorry, I went all the way on camera. Distressed ink, distressed oxide. So you can use them both that way. Okay, and there's so much ink left. I'm going to go ahead and do the wet um, lift from that as well. Because there's still so much ink that's still there to use. So, let me move that by. Okay, so I'm going to spritz it. Okay, and here we go. And give it a lift. Uh, look at that. That is so cool. I just love it. <laughs> I just love it. Now, if you did not want the lines, that's because there was, you know, so much water down and all, they all ran. If you don't want that, you could do it one color at a time. So you could just spritz and just put red down and then you could do the red and you know, get that a little dry and then be more careful about, you know, where you're, you know, where you're putting, applying your ink and you won't get the lines like that. But if you just do it this way, unless you just use very little water, which is an option, you will probably get lines. <laughs> but I like them. I think they're cool. And there's still, look, so much here. So let's do a swipe and... For that, I'm going to add even more water, believe it or not. There you go. So the ink is nice and juicy on my mat. And I am going to get on the side here. And then I am just going to swipe. I can't get it. <laughs> ah, this is when nails would come in handy. Okay. Oh, gosh. Look at that. Now, if you like that, and you don't want to like pull all that mixed color back just tap it off on the edge you got that big long drip you can just pull some of that off Same like that okay but I don't really mind so 
I'm going to actually keep swiping. Let's see. Um, I think it was this way. Here's another method. You can tap. So once you've swiped, maybe you want to add some interest like that. You see that? So you can just tap it. There you go. See? There you go. Look, it kind of gives, gives it a real, just a, an unpredictable pattern. So cool. Look at that. This is a great method to use also if you like to do doodling. So you can just get this kind of wacky random pattern, let it dry, and then go back and doodle over it. Make you know flowers or just kind of see if you can see an image in um, what you've created and you can just totally go and doodle around it, which is a lot of fun. It's a great thing to do too if you're bored. You can make up some of these if you have to go to an appointment and you, have, you know you're gonna have to wait or you're waiting, you go with someone else. And maybe you're just there either as the parent or for support and you're going to be in the waiting room. <laughs> Make up some of these, bring a pen, and just sit and doodle. So there you go. Isn't that pretty? So much ink left. So where is my little catch-all paper? I've already lost it. Hold on. Oh, here we go. It's getting pretty damp. Um... You have to be careful, like this is just cardstock and it was not even a very heavy cardstock. If you have something really heavy is a good thing because a lot of times, at least when I use the distressed oxides and inks, as you see I use it uh, with water. So you need something that's super strong that's just not going to get all crumbly. And I'm afraid if I keep going on this one it's going to get crumbly so I'm going to take just a second and give it a dry before I sop up this. Okay, I gave it a quick dry, um, maybe 20 or 30 seconds with my heat gun, and it's pretty good. And you always have the back as well. So let me spritz this because it's starting to dry. And let's just sop it up. Isn't that cool? Oh, we had a lot of water on there. It got really damp again. Okay. All right, that's going to be it for that. Okay. I did tell you I would do a, a dry um, direct apply with the distressed oxide, so let's do that now. Okay, here are my colors. Here we go. These are, you know, like I said, these are much bigger than the other ones, so a little different. You can get some really opaque um, coverage with distress oxides. Look at that. I could totally cover it. I mean, have, don't have to leave any of the background from the paper. Green. Well, I saw over my fingers, so I got some red down here, but that's okay. Let's put this. Oops. And I know I haven't quoted and I haven't called out all of the colors I'm using, but make sure to check in the description box below, and I'm going to list all of the colors, the names, and everything of what I've used today. So make sure to check below if you're interested and you want to know exactly what colors. Here's the green. And my favorite, my current favorite. Let's see. That's just so pretty. I guess because it's like a fall color. It makes me think of a fall color. There. Isn't that neat? That's great. But that is the direct apply. It looks like I've got, hold on. Oop, there we go. <laughs> 
something was on the wet paint and I didn't want it to dry on there. Now those are the two main methods that I use, the direct apply and the lifting with the um, dry and the water and actually the lifting is what I use probably 95% of the time. One of the neat things that you can use these for is to paint with. So if you don't have paints, if you have distressed oxides or inks, that's all you need and I'll show you. Okay, I've got a little stamp of a present and I've got a paintbrush. Okay. Now it doesn't matter, you can do this with the inks or the oxides. Um, I'm, for this purpose, I'm just going to use these because they're smaller and I don't, I won't use as much of my ink. So I'll just put a little bit down, just a little corner. And where's my spray? I will give it a spray. And you just put it in. There you go. You can paint right with the oxides or the inks. Just add water and you've got paint. Isn't that neat? Let me do another color. And actually, I don't really even need to spray because I'm going to wet my paintbrush. So you can forego that step if you want to because you're going to add water to it anyway. Now remember, the more water you add, the lighter the color is going to be. Since the water dilutes it, you're going to get a paler color. So if you like this blue, but you're like, wow, that's just a little too dark. I don't want it that dark. I want something a little lighter. Just add some water to it. There you go, and you can get a much lighter version. We'll go ahead and do, and you can use a spray or you can just add it with your brush too. There you go. We'll go ahead and finish out our present. Make this side a little lighter. There you go. Very easy. These are so versatile. They're great for backgrounds or as you can see, you can even paint with them. There's something else you can do with them and let me get cleaned up and I'll show you. Another thing you can do is stamp with them. You can use them as ink for your stamp. Now if you do it with a dry or direct application like this, you get a, a crisp image. Okay, let's put this here. Oops. There you go. If you can see that, it has a nice crisp image. Now, if you do a lifting technique, you can do that as well. this off. Okay. So you can put it in there. There you go. That works just as well. Now if you want to give like an illusion of the leaf and it doesn't have to be perfectly crisp, you can add a little bit of water. A little bit of water in there and it makes it a lot looser like this is just a little bit of water so let's see that's still fairly crisp but you know, if you really get it kind of sopped up in there let's see there we go there and that'll dry and it'll be a little blurry and you can also take your paintbrush and kind of move things around. Ooh, actually that absorbed pretty quickly. <laughs> but this is the that is one of the differences in this the distressed ink 
and the distressed oxides, the inks absorb quickly into paper. So you don't have all as much time to play around with them and move them around as you normally would. But still, you could go in and just kind of, you know, do the painting technique. And just kind of blur that around. So. Oops. <laughs> that was a lot. That's okay. So I can go in and kind of lift some out with my pen pencil, how much the pencil, and with my brush. But again, it's still kind of a neat look. It's kind of a, an illusion. It's not a perfect leaf, which may be great for like a background. If it's in the distance, you're not going to see a lot of detail anyway, and that might be what you want in the first place. So there. So yeah, so you can use it as ink for your stamps. Another really cool technique is to use aluminum foil. So I want to take off a piece. Well, I probably don't need that much. <laughs> so let's just tear that and save this for another time. Actually, that's a small one. I think I'll use this one. Actually, I'm going to use the bigger one. So you just crumple it. There you go. Now can you just cover, oops, I'm sorry about that. You just cover your foil with your inks. I'm using the oxides for this one. Since I've used the uh, inks for so many of the other examples, they need to be represented as well. <laughs> there you go. Put that around. And this is ice spruce. And then I'm going to add another color. This is a candied apple. Just sporadically around. Okay. There. Okay. Now, I'm going to do just a dry lift. See how that works. I don't think I've ever done this where I didn't get some of it on the back. <laughs> if you're going to use the back for something, then be extra careful because I know I've never been able to keep it clean. There. Isn't that neat? It is so delicate. That is just gorgeous. You know what, let me see if I can get some more. Look at that. I love it. Perfect. It is just so delicate. This would make a beautiful background for a card, a Christmas card. It's not in your face color, it's just just this pattern, you know, improper, not improper. What am I trying to say? It's um Oh, I can't, I don't have the words, but it's just, you know, random. There you go. Just this random pattern of color. It's just beautiful. I love, love, love that. So that is using foil uh, dry with a lift. Let's add a little bit of water and see the difference. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and, well, no, I think I want to add a little bit more. So I lifted a lot of that up. It is a little hard to see on the foil. <laughs> there could have still been a lot there. I just can't see it. Oops. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to give it a spritz. And I'm going to lay it down. Push it down all over. 
make a mess on the back as usual there that may actually show up for you a little bit better it's very much like the dry except let me bring this over here it's still delicate but not quite as much I mean it's not quite as delicate as the dry lift but still it's still quite delicate let me go ahead and get it everywhere because I will probably use this for something this is just such a neat technique I'm sure somebody else has done this but this I came up with this was just me playing around um, trying to think of different textures what I could use to give different textures so I actually didn't see it on uh, YouTube although I, there is I'm no doubt that somebody has already done this this um, was at the time an original idea <laughs> or at least I thought it was <laughs> so there you go isn't that neat that is I just love it as beautiful so that is a technique using foil. The next technique is very similar, except this time I'll be using cling wrap. Just going to create some type of texture. Just try to make some lines. Let's see. All right. So that's what we've got. Oh, you know what? I just thought of something. Yeah, look. Let's see if we can get that to stick to the surface a little better so it doesn't move around. So I'm going to spritz it with water first and see if that does something. Oh, yeah. Look. Ah, awesome. In this case, I'm going to use the ink oxides again. I don't know if you can hear my dog, but she's snoring. It seemed loud to me, so I don't know if you can hear it or not, but I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. So I switched up, and I'm, this time I'm going to use peeled paint and candied apple. So, just going to dab that around. And you don't have to use two colors, you can always just use one. I just think it's more interesting just to see how it comes out when there's more than one color. You can try using three or four or whatever you want. Okay, so let's do just a dry lift. Let's get a piece. Can you hear? <laughs> She's snoring so loud. She is such a loud snorer. She had a doctor appointment today, so I think that wore her out. Okay. So this is going to be a dry lift. Let's take a look. Look, isn't that too cool? Look at the difference. So here's the dry lift using the foil. Okay, very delicate. Here's the dry lift using the cling wrap. It's still delicate, but it just gives a different pattern. This almost looks like trees. Like you've got branches in here. And this is just, you know, just a random pattern. But both just gorgeous. I love it. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Let's see. I'm going to put red down. And again, I'm swirling it. If I were just to stamp it, I would get that hard edge. And... I don't know. Well, I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for. You might want the hard edge. But, I guess I don't because I'm swirling it. <laughs> so, well, there you go. Okay. Let me get another piece of paper. Again, this is watercolor paper. Now I'm going to give it a spritz. Okay. And I'll lay that down. got oh man isn't that gorgeous I love it that is just so 
interesting. Let's get this down here. Look at that. Looks like a neat tree, like trees, like just a neat forest scene. Oh my gosh, that is just so cool. So cool. All right, so there you go. That is the cling wrap technique. There's another technique I haven't shown you. Um, all right, so let's do, let's just do one color. Okay, I'm going to spritz it a little bit, and I'm just going to swipe it, oops, swipe it down. Does not want to get the edge, come on, <laughs> stop playing with me, okay. Isn't that neat? You can just get the most interesting textures and uh, just compositions. It's just so interesting. Okay. Oh, sorry. I get lost in looking at it. All right. Actually, I'm going to put a little bit more. Get it covered. I kind of want to cover it pretty well. Okay. So there you go. Now, you can also add droplets of water once you've already got the color on there to add a really cool effect. Now, let's see. Let me try doing it this way. Oops. Come on. Hard to get a droplet of water when you want one. Let me see. <laughs> they keep landing over here. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I have to put it right on there. Okay. I'm trying not to spray it because I can't control it and I just don't want it to go everywhere. Okay. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. There you go. Now, as this dries, it's going to leave a little spot where the water was. And you can also do it with alcohol. So up here, I'm going to use alcohol. Let's hope I have better luck getting drops to come out. Let's see. <laughs> no. Oh, there you go. That left big. I wish my water would do that. Like big spots. Okay. okay. I'm not sure if you can see those drops. I'm looking at a tiny little view screen. <laughs> so I always think you can't see things, but it turns out you usually can see them better than I think you can. So you see the spots, the rings that the water left? That is so cool. <laughs> so you can get your background laid out and then you can go over it and just you can spritz it or you can I know some of the squirt bottles where you can push down just a little bit and get kind of bigger globs to come out it just depends on the look that you're going for and the water worked really well the alcohol I don't know why usually the alcohol works I can kind of see them but they got real chalky so it could be that I have to lift. Another thing you can do is not wait for them to dry, but put them down and lift them up with a paper towel. Let's try that with the alcohol. Maybe that works better. So let's see. There, 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 there. Okay. Let's. Okay. I can see it, but I can't see it real well. So now I'm curious. I, I know I've done it before. Maybe I used the distressed inks and not the oxides. But as you can see, the water worked super well with the oxide. All right, now I want to try the ink. Okay, so I'm going to lift that. This is using the Distressed Ink this time. And here, that's not nearly as dark as I wanted, so. Oh my gosh, look how pretty that is. <laughs> that came out really pretty. Now, in using watercolor paper, you know, it has a texture to it. 
This is cold press. I believe 110 pound watercolor paper. So that's what gives you all of that um, that texture look because there is actual texture on the pa on the paper. But let's keep going. <laughs> Okay. okay. Applying the alcohol. Make sure. Yes. And it's squirting everywhere. So you can see a couple of the big drops come up already, but there's a lot of little drops on there as well. Let's see. Alcohol dries so quickly that I don't know if using the paper towel is going to matter. Like I can see the big drops. Can't really see the little drops. Maybe it has to be wet when you do it. I really can't. It's driving me crazy now. I can't remember because I know I've done it before. <laughs> so let's try again. It's my last try. So it's wet. Go ahead and apply the alcohol while it's wet. Okay. There we go. That's the ticket. So it looks like it works best. The alcohol works best when the distressed ink is still wet. You can see the circles coming up real well. So let me try the oxide again. Alright, it's still wet, so let's apply the alcohol. Ooh, wow, look at that. Oh, yeah. Wow, look. Oh, my gosh. That works great. Okay, that's the answer. So, the inks and the oxides need to be wet, at least from my experience here. <laughs> I got the best result when I applied the, oops, when I applied the alcohol to the distressed ink and oxide when they were wet as opposed to when they had already been dried. So there you go. That's using alcohol and water to give little circles. You guys, I was done filming this video when I realized I totally forgot to show you blending. <laughs> And there are card makers out there who are probably pulling their hair right now and screaming, what? Because this is really one of the main ways to use distress inks and oxides. But not for me. I mean, I love it, but I'm not very good at it. And it's because I don't do it very often. Probably the last time was last year about this time, actually, when I was doing Christmas cards. I'm not good at it, but I will go ahead and show you how to do it and give you the, at least the idea behind it. And you'll just have to practice and probably watch a few other videos to get maybe secrets of how to do it well. I have a blender. You don't need this blending tool. You can use um, makeup sponges, as you see I use. That's fine. Oops. So here's what you do. You just take it and you just add color just using the blending tool. Now there are ways to add it and make it super smooth as you can see. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> I probably should have watched some videos first but like I said this I don't use this method very often Although, like I said, tons of people do, especially card makers, especially at Christmas because you can, you can like mask off certain parts. You can make a nice little, here, let's do that. You can might make a nice little curvature like it's a hill and you can put that down like so and you can come in and you can blend. Like, like this. 
Hold on, give it just a second. There you go. You can run like that, and look, it gives you this awesome snowbank. Right? Isn't that gorgeous? So, it is super cool. So, I'm going to have to build that skill up again, watch some videos, practice some more, and, and get this to look better than this. <laughs> So um, using it as color, like background color, and, and blending it is definitely one of the main ways that people use distress inks and oxides. Let me go ahead and try an ink on the other side. Let's see. Let's see. It's crazy to talk about Christmas, right? But this really may be one of the last videos I make that isn't Christmas oriented. If you are a crafter, craft shows for Christmas picking up right now. So there's one I'm going to attend this weekend, which I kind of last minute was able to, to sit in with someone else who had a booth. I'm not going to have very much space, but that's okay because I'm not really prepared. <laughs> I don't have a lot of stuff. But yeah, if you hit the craft circuit, then people are really, really focused on Christmas items, fall and Christmas items. I'm going to try not to make all my next videos about Christmas because, like, it's super early October, but, like, October 2nd. But at the same time, you know, it's such a big holiday that it takes a long time to prepare. Let me use a different one. Actually, let me use a sponge. This is just a makeup sponge. I uh, got from the dollar store. Makeup wedge, I believe they call it. Okay, let's see, maybe I'll do better this way. <laughs> let's see. Oh, not really. <laughs> I really need to practice. Oh, I need to practice. Because when you learn how to do this, it, it gives an absolute gorgeous effect. It can be a quick and easy way to do your background for a card and have it just look gorgeous. But Gina needs to practice. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> That's not good, but hey, you get the idea. See? So that is using it um, to blend and create a background. I believe you can also, let me cover this, blend, like really blend, and blend another color in. Let me try that real quick. Okay. I grabbed the purple. This is wilted violet. It may be, I don't know, not the right color. <laughs> I told you I don't do this technique very often. But let's see what happens. Look at that. Look how well it blends into the other color. It's blending right into that blue. Boy, these are a game changer. They are so versatile. Look at that. That's a beautiful blend. Very cool. So that is an example of, uh, of blending. There's one last thing I want to show you, and this is using Distressed Micro Glaze. And what this does is put a glaze over top of your Distressed Oxides. Let's see, these are dry now, so let me show you the difference in the color. This was the Distress Ink, and this is the Distress Oxide. You see how it has kind of a white, whitish, powdery, chalky look? Your Distress Glaze will help with that, and it helps to seal the color. So I'll just do half of it. so that you can see the difference. Can you see that? It removes that chalky film that's on top. Here's the ink again. So using, oops, I didn't put the lid on. So using the distressed glaze helps remove the chalky finish from your distress oxides. And a lot of people don't really like that look of the, the chalky finish. So this enables you to use the distress oxide and still get a deep, vibrant color. 
pretty cool. Okay, I believe that was the last that I wanted to show you. <laughs> so we're out of order a little bit because I've already filmed my wrap up and goodbye. So when you see it in just a minute, um, it's not going to have those two, these two um, pieces to show. But I didn't want to leave them out of the video because they are very important and especially this one is just one of the main ways people use this product and I didn't want to make a video and leave it out. So there you go. And thank you for sticking around. Okay, so here's what we did. We have the inks with the direct apply, the dry lift, the wet lift, and the wet swipe. And here are the oxides with the direct apply, the dry lift, the wet lift, and the swipe. Here we have the tin foil dry, the tin foil wet, and we have the cling wrap dry and the cling wrap wet. The water droplet and the alcohol droplet. We have using them as a stamp using, I can't remember if I used the distress, uh, I think I used the distressed ink because it was smaller. But you could use it dry to get a crisp uh, outline or you could use it wet and you can use it as paint. Remember, the more water you add, the lighter the color becomes. So there you go. That is distressed oxides and inks. There is probably an infinite number of ways you can use them. This is just a few. But this is enough to get you started and give you an idea of what they can do. I encourage you to explore and to play with them. There's no telling how many wonderful end results you can get. You just have to get out there and try different things and see what happens. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and really makes you want to go out and get some. <laughs> get some distressed inks and oxides because they are very, very versatile and you can use them in just so many ways. Thank you for joining me. I would love a thumbs up if you learned something or, and enjoyed this video. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. Me, my little channel would be grateful. <laughs> Leave a comment if you have any questions about anything you've seen here, or if you have a different technique, I would love to hear about it. I love playing with these, and if you have come up with something really cool, either a method or a technique, then please leave a comment below. I would love to hear about it. Thanks again. I hope you have a fantastic day. Until next time, bye!